Despite there being room on the War Memorial for more names, we hope it never has any further names added to it. To this day, I'm still approached by people in the town who are eager to speak to me about the War Memorial and how wonderful the fallen poppies were in the parish church on Saturday the 10th of November. If you were there, I hope it will be a memory that will stay with you for some time. I think it was absolutely wonderful. A booklet has been put together, Armistice 100 Years On, and also her big brother, the winner, Thomas Woods, to come forward for their prizes, please. through uh, 50 years of Chroma Voluntary Entertainment Organisation. Uh, that is what we are celebrating this year. Um, those of you that are long-term members of residents of Chroma will know, and I've had it said on many occasions, there were carnivals before yours, or before the VEO, and that is quite true. And I think perhaps the first slide up there uh, may confirm that. Yes, it was the end of the uh, uh, Alfie Howard uh, carnivals, as many people put them, because uh, he was uh, the person who organised them on behalf of the Cromer Urban District Council. I think that's what I've got the title right. Yeah. Um, and they came to an end in '69, and they had been in, uh, organised by the Peer and Entertainment Committee, which was wound up. And uh, Councillor Graveling said that Chroma had gotten into a bit of a rut, and if they didn't get out of it, Chroma wouldn't get any visitors. And uh, also, uh, Mr. Alec Gray, um, who I believe at the time was the head of the secondary school, he was also chairman of that committee. He said, I'm afraid that failure must be laid fairly, fairly and squarely with the public whose support we have not received. I'll come back to that statement a little later on, perhaps. Uh, the pictures there, uh, Elfie uh, standing on the, the left there, I think the Carnival Queen on that particular occasion was Ros Hudson. Did anybody confirm that? And uh, she was crowned by the Curly King and Queen. And uh, I noticed in the, uh, the background of the, the second picture with the Cadillac there is the Grand Hotel. And in fact, it is the 50th anniversary of the Grand Hotel burning down this year, isn't it? So, pre-70 carnivals, 1950s and 60s, Troma uh, Urban District Council, Alfie Howard was the town crier, and I think he was a national town crier as well, champion, I think. Yeah. Um, he was employed to organise the summer entertainment in the town. Uh, Carnival week was the uh, third week in August. Uh, similar to what it is now, and he all entertained, he provided entertainment on the prom, beach in the town, and particularly in North Lodge Park, where most of the, the events were centred. Carnival Day was, uh, would have been crowned with the Carnival Queen, grand procession from Ferns Park, 
up in Suffield Park and down into the town. But uh, the children weren't expected to walk that far. They joined the procession uh, at North Lodge Park. And then uh, a tradition that carries on this uh, still was the carnival dance in North Lodge Park. And from looking at the records, I think it was probably uh, more like our Saturday uh, children's uh, family event. Uh, there were games and dances and, and all the rest of it. Uh, just a couple of pictures there of Alfie and his regalia. Uh, the one on the right is the, the, the year was the year that he came back to the town not that long ago. And I expect you recognise the person sitting behind him. Simon, Thomas, uh, the year uh, he's grand uh, Miss Crone. One of the traditions of Crone uh, Carnival has been the waiters and waitresses races, and um, they we carry those on from the, the 50s and 60s. Uh, you may or may not recognise where the race was being run at this stage. In fact, a picture was taken outside more or less the, the main entrance to the church, looking back down Church Street. And those buildings in the background, of course, are no longer there. That is now Rust's, or was Rust's, as Boots, that, that group of shops down there. And uh, the waitress race went round the church. And I'd love to be able to bring it back. So, basically, that was uh, the, uh, the end of the 50s and 60s carnivals. And the following year, 1970, uh, Mrs. Lysett and Gordon Jessup uh, were the founders of the Chroma Voluntary Entertainment Organization, the VEO for short. And uh, we used that quite a bit in the early days, but nobody coming to Chroma knew what it was about anyhow. So we changed it to calling it the Chroma Carnival. And of course, Peter is still with us. He was the carnival <laughs> organiser in uh, uh, those first two years and organised the programme of events for, for the VEO. Uh, little did I know at the time, in 1972, and after carnival public meeting, that Peter was moving on, uh, uh, out of the town and went along and uh, made some comments about and I put forward ideas. The next thing I knew, I was being asked if I'd like to take on the, the children's entertainment. The 70s there were based on public participation, getting people involved, and I think that's something that we've tried to keep going uh, over the 50 years. One of the main events. Uh, was it's a knockout. So a lot of those things there. I, Children's Weeks, uh, as I said, I started in 73, did those 15 years. Um, and during that time, I, I, I did more of the craft oriented activities, uh, you know, holiday souvenirs, paint a postcard, short on the prom, um, and oh, a postcard is twice on that. Anyhow. Um, Chalk on the prom, uh, it was an idea that uh, Larry Randall brought back from Bournemouth for me one year. He'd been down on a holiday, he said, that's a good idea, boy, you ought to try that. <laughs> and so, uh, I did. And, uh, and it's been popular ever since, and still is. Will it continue to be one of the biggest towns in the country? Who knows? I don't mind if it isn't, as long as we have a good time. Um, will it continue to promote Chroma, which is what we've always tried to do as in its activities as sea time? So as I say, it's up to you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, do you have any questions or comments you'd like to pass the Tony, please? <laughs> there are two questions I get asked every year. One is, are we having the red arrows? The second is, when are the camels coming down? Uh, everybody, does everybody know about the camel? No. The feed perhaps don't. Well, in 2000, um, 
for the second time, I, I, we had camel racing at, at the, uh, on the Runton Road as part of the arena of entertainment. I'd taken part earlier, a few years earlier, uh, alongside Reverend Dave Hagen. And uh, I'm not sure if he won or I won. But anyhow, we thought, well, we'll, we'll have a rerun this time. And uh, in 2000, I, uh, we went along and got, uh, got these camels, but I got the one with the two humps. The back. And I thought, oh, that's good. I could sit in between the humps, and there was no saddle or any, although just a reins on it. And of course, yours truly fell off. <laughs> Three months off work, broken arm, and pelvis, which was very painful. And that's the only year I've missed the parade. But we did get back from the hospital just in time for it to come back onto the field. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's the story of the camel. So, yeah, I've seen the crowds grow. Um, I've seen people come out at the last minute when it's been pouring down with rain just before or during. And uh, it's a great feeling. It's, uh, Mayor says, so standing at the top of the Brunton Road there and looking down and seeing eight deep on either side of the road and you know, it's a great atmosphere and a privilege to be part of. Yeah. Okay, well on behalf of Plum Town Council and the uh, members of the town present, Tony, thank you very much. Congratulations <coughs> and um, I'm sure this year will be hugely successful and I will hope some best wishes for this year and many more years to come. Thank you very much, Tony.
door to door minibus services, bringing people from rural North Norfolk into local market towns and on excursions. Many passengers describe the service as a lifeline, and without it, hundreds of people would lose their independence and be unable to access basic local services. And the grant awarded to the community transport is £500. The next cheque is for Cromer Community Association, CIO. Cromer Community Centre is being upgraded with a new kitchen, toilet, small committee room and a better entrance. The majority of the project is being funded through a European grant of £60,000 and the remainder is being funded through a loan from West Norwich Credit Union and the Community Centre's own funds. And the grant awarded is £500. The next uh, check is for Marlin School of Dancing. Marlin School of Dancing intend to hold a charity show to include young talent in the community to pull together and raise money for mental health awareness. With the money raised from ticket sales, they intend to bring back services that once existed in North Norfolk. And the grant awarded is £1,000. <laughs> Next check goes to Chroma Christmas Lights Volunteers. This is the fifth year of an essential refurbishment programme which aims to replace the old Christmas set pieces with new wiring, supports, cabling, energy efficient LED lights. They are requesting support to continue with the next stage which is for refurbishment and replacement for at least 12 of their 22 set pieces and the grant awarded is £750. This check goes to the Chroma Town Crier. The Ancient and Honourable Guild of Town Crier's Annual Championships will be held this year in Chroma on the 18th of May. Some 30 plus town criers, many of them accompanied by their partners, all in costume, will be attending to take part. Our current town crier, Jason Bell, is retiring this year after 35 years as Chroma Town Crier. So it is fitting that this competition is coming to the town. In addition to the main competition, a small competition will also be held to appoint the new town crier for Chroma. So towards the event, a grant of £250 has been awarded. <laughs> the next grant is for the Friends of Chroma Museum. The Friends have agreed to provide for the museum an interactive screen for the Geology Gallery. The screen would provide an information source for all, from school children through to those of older generations. It will explain the history of the cliffs, the need for care of the cliffs, the continuing erosion and the need for safety on the beaches and the cliffs. The grant awarded is £350. This year, Chroma Flower Club is celebrating their 40th anniversary. It's important to mark this special milestone. Chroma Flower Club need to boost their funds to enable the club to continue in future. And the grant awarded is £450. Check is for the Jaguar Explorer Scout Group. In October, the Jaguar Explorer Scout Group will be undertaking a volunteer project in the poorer area of Ghana. They plan to take many of their explorer scouts to help with the project. This will involve the young people teaching in local schools and to do building work for the local people. This is a valuable experience for the young explorers and will give them a different outlook on 
life. And the grant awarded is £300. and Cromer Youth Football Club have agreed to join forces to act in the future building of a new football facility, hopefully to be granted soon. The joining of the clubs will benefit the community greatly and provide a better community feel to local football with young children aspiring to play football for the town of Cromer. Cromer Town and Adler Football Club need to provide kits to each team with a newly amalgamated football club and the grant awarded is £750. Okay. You can join us in the corner later for photographs, thank you. This award goes to the Friends of Chroma Academy Trust. The Friends wish to provide a complete drugs box with fake examples for teaching the students about drugs, what to look out for and what to avoid. All 12 drugs, which are harmless replicas, have been reviewed and improved considering recent changes in UK government guidelines and latest drug culture. Each drug is contained within its own removable crystal case, bearing updated and comprehensive details on appearance, methods of use, effects, street names, risks and what to look out for. And the grant awarded to the Chrome Academy Trust of Friends is £375. to the Friend of Nobles Park. This project is to extend the show garden created at the rear of the old brick bandstand for the 2018 Garden Festival to provide a garden with further examples of plants that thrive in the harsh chroma environment. The park is starting to become a focus for free and inclusive community events. Surveys show that the community want a park which is well maintained a safe community place with flowers and lawns and a special place of heritage and memories. And the grant awarded to the Friends of North Lodge Park is for £250. <laughs> this award is to the Chroma RNLI. This project is to highlight the RNLI's Respect with Water campaign, teaching the flow techniques to educate people to change their behaviour towards using the water safely. It increases their awareness of water safety when swimming for pleasure or water sports. Also to highlight how the RNLI work with emergency services. And the grant awarded is for £250. of the Runton Road corner bed. The plot was planted up initially 12 years ago and has stood up to the very exposed position reasonably well. However, many plants have been lost. The intention is to create wind breaks to help shelter the plant in. Much of the existing plants will remain or be moved. Additional plants will be purchased. This will enhance the appearance of the garden all year round for residents and visitors alike. And the grant awarded is for £250. Representing Hughes Electrical, <coughs> and he's here to present the prizes for the New Year's Day fireworks photograph competition. Kevin, over to you. We're here with Robert Burney, and he's going to come up to collect the boys. Also, 
the winner of the photography competition sponsored by Titanium Fireworks is also Robert Burney. <laughs> Again, on behalf of Cromwell Town Council and speaking on behalf of the Fireworks Committee, uh, we do have a chairman here tonight, Pat. Uh, thank you to Hughes Electro for your continued sponsorship. It's been valued and much appreciated over the last few years. Thank you very much. Welcome. The first honours award goes to Simon Clipsum. As well as working at Morrison, Simon takes charge of all the charities which collect there to raise money for good causes. In five years, Simon has helped to raise over £300,000. For 15 years, he's been a volunteer minibus driver for the Canaan and Christian Centre at Sheringham, giving up his time two Saturdays a month, four hours each time. Every Wednesday, he attends Cromer Junior School to open the book team. Simon has also spent 25 years helping to build Cromer Carnival floats for the church at Croma. He also attends Croma Church once a month, helping out of the laptop work. Simon works eight hours as a Croma community champion, but does more like 38 hours unpaid. It is his hobby, passion. The council is already aware of the good work he does, and the suggestion of his nomination on Facebook received many people agreeing. With research, I'm probably sure there's lots more work Simon has done. Simon, if you'd like to step forward, thank you. I promise to keep this as brief as possible, but there's a lot of people I'd like to thank. Can I first start by saying thank you to my family for all your support, all our town district councils and councillors, church, schools, the Carnival Committee, voluntary organisations and charities who through their partnerships have supported me in the role as Morrison's Community Champion. You have all helped make our town and district the rich community it is today. Thank you to all those that have nominated me. I am honoured to receive this award on behalf of all our staff and customers at Morrison's. Where well, I've served for the last 22 years and as, a current, and as their community champion for the last five years. I'm also thankful for the support of all those from Cromer Parish Church where I've worshipped and served the community for the last 38 years. All the charities and partnerships um, and parties, working parties in Hungary, further more charities and organisations here as part of the Open Book Team as mentioned and that bring the Bible to life in Cromer Junior School. Plus all the youth clubs I have been involved in at St Martin's and Canaan, being part of the Cobra Gospel Choir and community choirs all, all over the years. Finally, thank you to Morrison's for the opportunity to be the Cobra's Community Champion and do this amazing work helping our local and wider communities. Highlights were last year being given the honour of receiving the Vera Woodcock Award for, from the Cobra Youth Football Club for work in the community and for their four-year kit sponsorship, handing over keys for a brand new £35,000 minibus to the North Norfolk Community uh, Transport Scheme, paid for by the Morrisons Foundation. Last year we also broke many fa uh, fundraising records, making it the best year yet for the store collections. Over £31,000, um, including £4,860 collected for the Royal British Legion Poppy Appeal. Our charity partner, Click Sergeant, Young Lives vs Cancer, raised over £11,000, supporting families locally and nationally, plus 5.6 tonnes of food for the Chroma and District Food Bank, approximately 4,000 items for the Animal Welfare Bank. Altogether, our community benefited from a local total of over £81,000 in donations. During the last five years, our store's community fund has regularly sponsored two local primary schools breakfast clubs, a care home flower club, the Holt Youth Project and Young Carers, Friends of North Lodge Park, plus giving over £10,000 worth of vouchers to over 500 local charities and good causes. 
plus £10,000 worth of grants from our store's unique glass recycling scheme, including £3,200 through the Chrome Carnival. We also gave £1,000 of equipment and unsold food and grants to the Community Matters Cafe, plus £2,200 in other community giveaways. Store collections have raised over 186000 for local and national charities, including installing four community defibrillators around Cromer to the value of £6,000, including one outside on the wall as you come in. Customers and staff have also donated approximately 30,000 pre loved books, CDs and DVDs to the British Heart Foundation Book Bank, approximately 20 tonnes of food for the Cromer District Food Bank, approximately 20,000 pet food items for the Packed Pet Bank, and our charity partnership with Click Sergeant. In the last two years, they have raised, we have raised just under £20,000 for them. They support families locally and nationally. This is all thanks to our amazing and generous dedicated customers, staff and charities <coughs> and licenses, who in the last five years have raised an amazing grand total of 320,000 as <coughs> stole my thunder, but as mentioned earlier, <laughs> worth of donations for our local and wider communities, making our store one of the most generous in the Anglia region. I salute you all. Thank you, Sir. I think um, it's, it's very quickly worth reading, reading out what is said in here. The Mayor and members of Cromer Town Council have great pleasure in awarding this certificate of honour to it, and it's in recognition of a valuable and outstanding contribution to the community of Cromer. Anyway, this certificate, ladies and gentlemen, is for Alison Osborne. As church warden of the parish church for the past six years, a term which will finish at this year's annual parochial meeting in April, Alison has worked tirelessly to foster good relationships and promote opportunities for the church, the town and the people of Cromer to work together and support each other for the common good. And this also echoes what I said earlier on. We have uh, worked with the church and the church has worked really well with us. So ladies and gentlemen, Alison Osborne. making our community a better place. They work on North Lodge Park Gardens and Valerie bakes cakes at the cafe. Wherever they go, they pick up litter and dog muck which others have left. They are generally good people in this community. I know the next 
Tony and Peggy Webster have served at Chroma Art in their life for over 30 years until they retired earlier this year. They continue to support the station by arranging and emptying, counting and banking of all the monies in the donation boxes, which often total over £70,000 over the year. Their knowledge of Chroma and this connection to the art in their life is amazing. During his long tenure as chairman, Tony will be remembered for meeting the Duke of Kent at naming ceremonies of Chroma All Weather Life Force in 1986 and 2008, inviting the late Ronnie Corbett to open the Henry Grog Museum, the aged Peter Cadbury to achieve the return of the HF Bailey, Henry Block's lifeboat in Chroma during the war years. This is now the number one exhibit at the Henry Block Museum. During his tenure, Tony's wife Peggy has also been chair of the Chroma Ladies Lifeboat Guild. <coughs> Tony and Peggy, would like to come up, please. Because you are what you are. You give your all, all of you, 
And it's only fair that those, I mean, we're all, we all have different gifts. And it's not everybody who can be a counsellor. It's not an enviable task by any stretch of the imagination. But, um, you know, I'd just like to, I, I don't want to say thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Dressing him, feeding him, and things like that. And we'd like to, on behalf of Cromer Town Council, present to Helen Pritchard. <laughs> Thank you for coming today. <laughs>